This is my Honda Civic. We're going to get learnt on driving some stick shift in this ride. So let's stop right there. I think for you to really learn how to drive a stick shift, you really need some kind of concept of how it works, at least a little bit. So in an automatic car that we're all familiar with, you just put it in drive and you go. And you notice you can sit there with the brake pedal on and the engine's still running and you don't gotta do nothing. And it's sitting there and it does it, does it all itself. What makes that possible is a little invention called a torque converter. And this kind of kind of replaced the, the clutch. It, it's a hydraulic coupling that spins. It uses hydraulic fluid to fling it from the engine side to the transmission side. The downside of that is you lose about 10 to 15% of your efficiency from the engine to the transmission. And the engine side spins faster than the transmission side. So you lose some power there and inevitably some gas mileage. And that's why people historically have said manual transmissions get better gas mileage because they always have. Because once your clutch is released, that coupling between your engine and your transmission is one to one and you don't lose any power or any efficiency. However, there have been a lot of advancements in torque converters that allow them to get the gas mileage of a manual transmission in a clutch. So the clutch is just your coupling between your engine that's always spinning in the ground, that your wheels are sitting still. Okay, so the engine's spinning, and we can't just drop the clutch into the, into the you know, and start doing that. You'll stall the engine, because the engine's spinning. So we, we gotta ease the clutch in until it starts spinning. And that's exactly what you're doing when you're releasing the pedal on, the, on your manual transmission. So you gotta just get it going a little bit your engine spin a little bit, you release the clutch, you start spinning it, spin it, spin it. It slips, it's like a brake disc kind of, sort of like a brake disc, same type of material. That's all you're doing, you're doing kind of a burnout with the clutch on the flywheel as you release it and you're allowing some slippage to happen. That's the inherent design of it. So you're actually literally letting it slip. You can actually burn your clutch up. You try to do a burnout or something, you can actually end up burn the engine out and the clutch will be fully engaged and just doing a burnout on the clutch. That's what you hear out when someone says they burnt their clutch out or something. So a stick shift car can be parked two ways. You can just put it in gear if you're on flat. It won't really roll anywhere. Most of them have, well, all of them have an emergency brake. Some of them don't work. Like in my truck, my emergency brake doesn't work. So I'm screwed in the truck. I want to put the emergency brake on. When you go start it. Don't really matter if you're in gear or not. You just got to push the clutch in either way. Best to be in neutral, I guess. So start a manual car. I'm gonna have to push the clutch in. As you can see, I can turn the key and it's not gonna start until I push the clutch in. There's always a switch on the clutch. So if anytime you're learning to drive a stick shift, it's best to go somewhere that has a level, flat, paved surface, like a parking lot somewhere, where you're not really gonna roll either way. Have someone take you there in the car to teach you. You know, we're not gonna roll either way when it's in neutral and you got your foot off the brake and everything. So I found that spot. I'm not going anywhere right now. We're in neutral, no foot on the brake, nothing. So very first thing to do for a very beginner, learn how to drive a stick shift. I'm gonna push the clutch all the way in. That's pedal all the way on the left. And we're gonna put it in first gear. First gear is always all the way to the left and up. Okay. Then we're gonna find the point at which the clutch starts to grab. So, I'm going to slowly let the clutch out. And I'll probably have to crank the audio up. I want you to hear the engine. So as I, as I let that clutch out, it starts to grab. And we're not doing anything with the throttle right now. Leave your right foot totally alone. All we're doing is filling the point at which the clutch starts to grab. And you can hear the engine starts to die and you can look on the RPM. Uh, gauge it starts to go down so once you get a feel for that we can actually work on taking off in the car before we even start to, we don't even need to use the throttle at all that's the next step let's try to take off in the car without using the throttle the gas pedal at all get your right foot out of the way leave it in first gear and slowly let the clutch out now it's gonna start to grab let it slip it's slipping the car is moving very very slowly once it starts moving, let it out a little more, let it out a little more, and you're rolling. It takes a very, it takes a long time to get that going. You gotta let it slip a lot, and it's not necessarily great for the clutch, but doing it a few times to learn how to drive it, instead of driving it terribly, evens out quite a bit. It's 
probably better so and now you can see we're just idling around here I don't have a foot my feet aren't doing anything I'm not doing anything we're in first gear and I'm idling around driving like a normal car so it's that simple to get the car moving but the next step is to get it going faster because we don't want to we don't take off that slow so let me get back over here okay I'm gonna go ahead and I push the clutch in I put it in neutral real quick I'm gonna do that again push the clutch all the way in put it back in first gear try it one more time no throttle at all you can see we're not gonna don't let the engine die that's the key let it go down a little bit and then you let the clutch out my foot's off the brakes off the clutch and we're rolling have no issue at all and that can be done in any car with a clutch and that will give you a feel for the clutch and uh, you, from there it should be pretty easy to advance adding some throttle in now newer cars like this more modern cars they have a drive-by wire throttle nothing you really need to concern yourself with but the throttle response has a delay to it you can see if I hit the throttle it takes a half a second for it to do anything that can kind of throw you off so my advice if you're gonna to learn to drive stick you can do it in an older car it doesn't have that because it's a much more direct feel and this kind of throws you off it even throws me off when I first started driving this so we're back in first gear we're gonna to try to work on adding a little throttle now when we take off so I'm gonna rev it up I don't know if you can see the RPM gauge up here kind of hard in the GoPro Rev it up to about 1500 RPMs, right between the one and the two. Then slowly let the clutch out. Basically as simple as that. Um, and that's the hardest part about driving a stick shift, is just, just getting going. And when you're on a hill and stuff, like this looks like a little bit of an up incline, because we were already kind of rolling. So this is probably better. I'm going to try that again. Just add a little throttle that's it and we're rolling so you just gotta practice taking off as much as possible and once you get good at it it should be very quick it should be something like this I can you hear it kind of kind of died a little bit there and that's fine this is why I wasn't giving it quite enough throttle I'm gonna try it again this is what you need to do you got to drive around just practice taking off because that's the hardest part once you get moving shifting the gear and stuff really isn't that hard so and I mean it gets real simple in this car too especially little cars and stuff you just give it a little throttle and let it out slowly and you're going and once you get more advanced you actually feel what you're doing and it you can fine-tune you know how you how you work the clutch and the throttle so it gets better it's not as numb feeling as it might be at first so you don't really know what you're doing so try it again and this is and this is what you don't want to do let me show you what you don't want to do I, I guess if you have to if that's the only way you can get going rev it up that high and let it out but it's bad on the clutch you don't want to do that a lot so you're, you'll burn your clutch up but I mean, I guess if you're learning, you're all right. Cut doing it a couple times. Don't worry about it. It's hard, you know. You're not gonna mess mess the car up that fast. I mean, if you do drive it like that for a year, yeah, you're gonna probably be replacing your clutch. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take off. If I want to do a harder launch, I want to get it moving fast. Like, you see how fast? I literally was just that fast. Now, if we just drop the clutch. Look here, I'll show you what will happen. If we drop the clutch too fast, we'll stall out. <laughs> Actually, we did it. <laughs> I tried to drop it as fast as I could. This car is pretty smart. Okay, wow, it's pretty hard to stall the Civic. <laughs> we'll, uh, no throttle, I'll drop it. Okay, there it goes. Now it's stalled. But this car seemed to do something to kind of assist you taking off. I've never tried that before. That was kind of neat. That was kind of neat. I'm going to try... Wow, you can pretty much let the clutch out as fast as you can, as fast as you want to on this with just a little throttle. It'll, it'll get going by itself. That's crazy. I'm going to have to go over the Ranger and show you in that. It's a 
slightly trickier, but it's better in some ways. So we're getting rolling now. Shifting gears, clutch it, pull it down a second, straight down. Back to first, clutch in, back to first, put a seat belt on here. using the clutch at all we're still in third gear actually I slowed down that much and if we're not accelerating hard I didn't have to do nothing we're still in third gear just left it go down and now you don't want to flog the throttle when your RPMs are that low and you're in that high of a gear when you're going that slow you don't want to smash on it but if you're just cruising slowly like that you can go ahead and just leave it in gear you gotta do nothing really So we can go ahead and shift it in the fourth now, clutch it down the fourth. And that's the real easy part. I mean, once you're rolling, you, you, you hit, hit the gears, clutch in up to the gear, let the clutch out. And there is, there is a little trick. You want to throw some throttle in there when you're uh, releasing the clutch to the next gear. And that's where the drive-by-wire throttle on, the, on modern cars like this kind of throw, kind of throw you through a loop. It's a perfect want that perfect throttle right as you're releasing it and the delay will kind of throw you off so that's why I like older cars for driving a manual these newer cars weren't made, meant to really be made it up to manual transmission so I'm going to come up to a stop here I'm hitting the brake I'm still in fourth gear I'm going to go ahead and uh, clutch in down to second since we're still moving basically anytime if you're still moving I don't care how slow you can pretty much go into second instead of first first gear doesn't have a synchro so it can be hard to actually get your car into first gear if you're still moving a bit now there is this point where you're moving just a little bit where it matches up exactly you know you may not even have to have the clutch pop it right in the first gear but if you're moving at all you can go straight into second and you're usually good in basically any vehicle i've driven straight to second now up here clutch in down in neutral now you actually don't need to use the clutch to get it back into neutral and you certainly don't want to sit here at a red light and hold the clutch in a lot of people do that and I, I don't know why you just must like cramping up your leg but basically you just pop it back into neutral whenever you come up to a red light or a stop and I use the clutch there but actually if you tap the brake a little bit if you're decelerating at all you can actually just pull it right back out out of gear right in neutral and that works in any car and it do, it's not bad for it or nothing so I'll show you that at the next stop okay clutch in first gear taking off now second I'm gonna roll up the second here I'm not gonna bother shifting all right turn signals I'm getting on the highway all right now coming to stop boom neutral that took a little effort because I wasn't braking under you don't really want to do that so that probably should use a clutch for that but anytime you're braking it'll pop right back out I'll show you if you, you got to force it like that I should have probably just went ahead and tapped the clutch I'm gonna pull up here a little bit
car, you don't gotta do nothing. It's actually nicer because you can, I mean, when you go to pass cars, you can accelerate, uh, you can just slam on the throttle, and the car is not figuring, trying to shift up the gear, other gears and stuff, like automatics do. I'm gonna do an upshift. We're going pretty fast, but I'm gonna throw down an upshift here from fifth to fourth. Just gonna cram the clutch, jam it in the fourth, and it's throttle. Clutch, pop it in the fourth, slam the throttle. That's what you need to do if you're passing someone. Roll, you really need to get some beans going. You really need to give it the beans. And braking, pull it right out back in the neutral, no clutch. Like I was explaining to you earlier. Probably go straight in the first here. Yeah, and when you're going that slow, to creepy crawl, it'll go right in the first gear usually. Usually about where you match up. Or your engine idle speed matches up with the gearing. And there, no clutch. I just took it out second, right in the neutral. Little clutch in the first, move up here. This is probably the worst part of having a stick shift is when you're in stop and go uh, traffic like this. I'm moving a little bit, popping in a second. This is definitely the worst of having a stick shift, stop and go traffic. And we're in second, I'm gonna pop it back out in the neutral. And go straight back in the second. Went the clutch out, or just coast in in second. Now, if you're having a hard time taking off on whatever vehicle you're driving, there's another little trick you can try, and that's kind of just blipping the throttle a couple times, like this. Like that. Well, that was not a good example. <laughs> Let me try it again. The next light. Clutch in, first gear. I use the throttle blip that time. Here, I just two blips. Pot, let the clutch out, and we're rolling. So we're on a we're on a little bit of a hill right now. You see, if I just push the clutch in, start rolling backwards. We're going first gear. As soon as oh, I stalled it. As soon as I get off the brake, I'm gonna give it some throttle and let the clutch out and let it grab a little bit. So that's how you get off a hill, sorta. You know, I stalled it. Green light, clutch. And when you're driving a manual, sometimes you're the guy sitting there for a second when the light turns green because you're neutral and. Thank you for watching my video. I really hope you learned some from this, took something away from it, at least. Uh, if you're a first time driver, really wish you the best of luck with a stick shift. Definitely a really fun thing to drive. I personally love them. It's all I really drive in my personal cars. Uh, like I said, there are some, you get, in, you get in traffic and stuff. It can be a pain in the butt. But other, other than that, it's a real fun experience. Keeps you focused on driving. So go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you like this video.